All right, guys, welcome to another video. Let's go ahead and get started. The goal for today is to just identify quick buzzwords that you'll see whenever a patient has a liver lesion. These can be really confusing if you don't know the very specific little words to look for. We won't be getting into all the different clinical presentation of these things today, just kind of identifying them basically via imaging. And so like I was saying, when it comes to liver cysts, the name of the game is buzzwords. This is kind of our bank of different answers we'll have. So we have FNH, hepatic adenoma, regenerative nodules, hepatocellular carcinoma, liver mets, hemangioma, echinococcus, and entamoeba histolytica. The full diagnosis of different liver cysts goes well beyond these, but this is just a good starting point. If you see a central scar, this means you're dealing with focal nodular hyperplasia. This is what it looks like. Hopefully you can see my cursor here. We see a central little scarring on CT. It is darker than the rest of it, which means it would be hypoechoic. If we see a woman on long-term oral contraceptives, I can almost guarantee you it's a hepatic adenoma. It's a very homogeneous, solid cystic mass. And one thing people will want to know is, um, is this cancer? Is this benign or is this cancer? And the cutoff you're looking for is four centimeters. If a woman has a hepatic adenoma five centimeters or above, you're basically going to take it out for peace of mind. Otherwise, it could malignantly transform into hepatocellular carcinoma. If you have sudden severe abdominal pain with hypotension, this suggests that rupture of the hepatic adenoma into the peritoneum. So if um, if you have a woman you've been following with hepatic adenoma and one day she suddenly is hurting very bad, this, is, this needs to be rushed to the OR. Someone with hepatic adenoma may actually want to know if they have cancer. So, you know, if you look at it from the perspective of the patient you're just looking at and imaging, how can you reassure them that they don't have HCC? Really the best way to do this is via a serum AFP. Um, Obviously, not all HCCs make AFP, so you might consider either a biopsy or just taking the thing out for peace of mind. If you have a patient with long-standing cirrhosis and they have a very central, you know, like just one lesion, kind of like this, one lesion that's very well circumscribed, um, you're now suspicious for hepatocellular carcinoma. So. Um, the, the management of these kind of goes beyond the scope of this video, but you're either looking at like a PET scan or just taking the thing out. If you have a patient with long-standing cirrhosis, obviously one possibility is HCC like we talked about. The other possibility is that you have regenerative nodules. We won't really get into these, but just know that they exist. Um, let's say you have a patient with a long-standing history of a breast mass. She didn't want to go get it checked out. Um, maybe didn't have access to mammograms. So now she's presenting like this. What you need to look out for here is basically liver metastasis. This one's really obvious, so I won't really get into it. Um, but long story short, if you have any patient with B symptoms, such as fatigue, or maybe they're hinting at some other cancer, like the patient had a melanoma, um, the patient had colon cancer, the patient had GI bleed, you're looking at liver mets. One thing that a test question might ask you, because obviously it's really easy to identify METs on liver, so um, they might want to ask you which cancer it likely was. So the ones to look out for are mostly colon cancer and breast cancer. You can also see melanoma and pancreas. When it comes to this, you're basically trying to look at other patient characteristics. You know, um, are they a male in their 60s? Are they a woman in their 50s? These are kind of things to look out for. Maybe they um, drive a truck and they have a history of sun exposure. So um, you kind of have to look at your patient here. Another thing we're going to learn about is non-cystic lesions. So these will kind of be presented in the same question stems. You basically just have a woman with either an incidental liver finding or some sort of vague right upper quadrant pain. I can almost guarantee you you'll see this. Cysts with daughter cysts. It's really only one thing you're looking at, kinococcus. So here you see one giant thing in the liver and you have lots of septations and uh, they look like little, you know, like little daughter cysts, almost like an ovary. This is a kinococcus. Uh, there's almost nothing else that does this. 
Um, on ultrasound, you see a bunch of little grapes, snowstorm appearance. Um, this is also a Kinococcus, same thing, we just got an ultrasound. Um, if you look to the right here, this is what one of these looks like when you cut it open. It uh, basically doesn't look like anything else. It's really the name of the game with Hydatid disease. Um, quick question for you here. A Kinococcus, um, you might be asked what it's caused by. So is it a bacteria? Is it a fungus? Is it a tapeworm? Is it a fluke? Is it a roundworm, cestode, trematode, nematode? Um, all those things. So pause here and kind of think about it. If you already know the answer, I'll move on. Echinococcus is a tapeworm. Um, if you look down here, screenshot this, it's really high yield. You want to be able to classify different parasites within their little group. So um, the, the nematodes, that's almost all of them. And uh, so I, I would basically just know what's not a nematode and then kind of rule it out from there. So when it comes to treatment of hydatid cysts, you're basically looking at size. And if it's over 10, you're taking the thing out. One thing you might get asked is a woman is having a surgical resection of hydatid cyst disease and she suddenly de develops respiratory distress. Um, this is due to an anaphylactic reaction. Let's say you have a cyst in a woman. Um, it's described as hyperechoic on ultrasound and homogenous. They give you some sort of vague finding like arterial enhancement on CT. Really the best way to diagnose this is going to be pathology. So let's say you see cavernous vascular spaces. Um, this is gonna be hepatic hemangioma. So this is what it looks like if you kind of look at my cursor here. You have a hyperechoic, meaning it's white on ultrasound, meaning it's dense. Um, and then behind it you have some shadowing, which means that this thing is solid. Uh, the shadowing behind it just means that this is taking up all the sound waves and there's less to go past it. Here we see the portal vein. Um, yeah, so this is a hemangioma. Let's say you have someone who recently traveled to Mexico and they had diarrhea. Um, maybe the diarrhea went away and has now come back. It'll be some vague thing like that. And they just have one solid kind of uh, abscess looking thing. And so... This is entamoeba histolytica. You might remember the buzzwords anchovy paste. I think this is treated with um, metronidazole, I think. Let's say someone had recently had an ERCP for cholangitis, and now you see uh, one little bleb here. This is a life-threatening condition. It's called a pyogenic liver abscess. Um, this thing needs to be treated immediately. So just summarizing, um, pause here and take a screenshot of this. This is a... Uh, I can basically guarantee you'll have at least two or three questions on your boards from this slide alone. If you have any questions, just shoot them in the comments. Thanks.